So this nurse right here during the first pandemic from COVID was fired. Well, she started getting a little suspicious about some stuff here and well, how greed can really take over something. So she decided to go a little undercover, if you will. It's gonna be a two part series because it's rather lengthy, but let me know in the comments section, you know, and please share with all your nurses and doctors and any medical professional staff on this one because this is corruption at its finest. Watch this. Why would they take me out of his room and put me in the ED? And then not 20 minutes later, he's dead. It doesn't make sense. Like, did they kill him? He was my one patient that was gonna live. He shouldn't have died. I don't know what they did to him. Something's not right. I got back to my hotel room and I broke down, like on the floor in tears, like, I can't do this. So I haven't talked about like this part in a long time. I like didn't know what else to do. So I called like my friends. I told them like what was happening. I told them that it was literally gross negligence. Nobody cared. They weren't coding. Patients that were, you know, a code blue, they would just let them go. And, you know, then reporting to the families, like, that they did everything they could when I know for a fact that they didn't. And when I saw that, that's when I, I realized, like, nobody is going to believe this. No one's going to believe that this is happening without proof. And so I contacted um, a couple New York attorneys, and we decided that I needed to go undercover. So... I did. This patient is in with like a non-COVID. I don't, I don't understand why they're doing that. I know. There's four patients in a row here who yeah. are non-COVID. And this is supposed to be the COVID. Yeah. Because seventh floor, they shut it down. That's right. I'm, it, I'm confused. And then they're going to have non-COVID there. Yeah. This is going to be the only COVID. So they shouldn't put any non-COVIDs here. Well, that's what they've been doing. The guy over in 29, I had him upstairs because I was on CCU before it. Yeah. And he came in with a, a, with a stroke. I know, that's what 26 one was, a stroke. It's and no COVID, and now he's got COVID, and he's on a vent. Well, because we gave it to him here. My attorney dropped off a pair of spy glasses for me. I got audio recording software for my phone, and I started recording. The bigger problem with this whole scenario is when they intubate people who don't need it. Yeah. And it looks very clear to me that they're just pushing it. It was like the day before intubation who was fine on their own breather. And then they intubated, and then he had a new and then they put in a pen too, and then it's and now he's 37 years old and dead. This isn't what my profession stands for. We can't look away. We're mandatory reporters. Like, this is our job to protect the patient. As nurses, we're patient advocates. Our oath is to do no harm, and, like, that's all that was being done. There were very few actual ICU doctors running these floors. They had residents in. There was ophthalmologists, dentists, um, you know, people that had had absolutely no clue what they were doing. Maybe, you know, two or three respiratory therapists for the entire hospital when we needed respiratory therapists for the ventilators because nobody knew how to run them, which also caused that. So they would blow out these patients' lungs and then call the day. Um, next patient in, same thing. Nearly 2,000 people have tested positive for coronavirus. That's bad, and this is worse. Hospitals there are getting ready tonight for a surge. Meantime, Governor Ned Lamont toured a facility manufacturing ventilators for critical care patients. 34 people have died, and federal officials just approved a disaster declaration for the state, and that will allow all eight counties to be reimbursed for costs associated with the response to the pandemic. Patients coming into the emergency room would be given no options. And they would be told, if you're not admitted, you're going to die, essentially. You need to get admitted. And so they did. You know, fear is a, fear is a very, very strong emotion. And when people are unaware of what's going on, obviously they're going to trust us.
but nobody was telling the truth. The uh, Comfort now is just pulling into dock here they in town. They could have went to the Comfort ship where, you know, if they didn't have COVID, that's, that was meant for, for them, but it was just bypassed. Governor Cuomo said that they were running out of space and they needed extra hospital beds for the patients that didn't have COVID. And so President Trump at the time sent the ship and the ship was never utilized because they were ordered to stand down. You know, they admitted everybody to these hospitals. They, they stuffed them in like sardines because there was financial incentive to do so. It was $13,000 to admit these patients to the hospitals, another $39,000 to put them on a ventilator. And then in some cases, people were worth $10,000 per death with no liability to any of the hospitals, any of the staff, any of the doctors, any of the nurses. And all at the same time, you know, nurses were getting paid $10,000 a week on average. Doctors were getting paid, you know, $50,000, $60,000 a week, and everybody was on gig orders. And if you said anything, you know, you were fired, which ultimately, you know, happened to me at the end of my, my time in New York.